Good day folks, welcome to the challenge. Challenge? Good day folks, welcome to the channel on a weekend. Today's Sunday. Uh, yesterday's vlog, Friday should I say, made it out late simply because I ended up going for a few drinks. Medicinal purposes for the back of course. Um, and because it was such a difficult day, it was a very short vlog. So I thought I would treat you with a special little video today on uh, a subject that we've been touching over the past month or so and that's bar snacks. I keep revisiting this because I'm keen to do something like this for the pub but it's becoming increasingly more obvious to me now that this particular batch of pub snacks isn't going to be cost effective for us to produce in small quantities for the pub. So I better tell you what they are. Right, it all starts with pigskins. So, I've done the pork scratchings and I've done the pork crunch or chicharrones as they call them. Um, what else do they call them? Pork rinds. I think they call them pork rinds in the States. So, they are two very different processes to achieve the scratchings and the, uh, the pork crunch. Let's just call it the pork rinds. To do the pork scratchings you need to have a really good batch of pig skin with a good layer of fat on it uh, and I think generally it comes from the hind of the pig but this for the uh, for the pork rinds you need to have a lean piece of pig skin and I buy this from Morrison's I know I should really be using a proper butcher and this stuff as you can see has been mechanically removed from the pig not done by hand and therefore it has very very little fat on it perfect for what we want so I've got a load here I've got like four packs I'm just gonna run it through uh, the first process and then you can once you've done this first process you can put it into storage and use them whenever you like so the first part is we need to get these pigskins boiled so Let's just flip the camera around and I'll be better to talk you through the process while I'm doing it than directly at the camera. Right, so this makes life a lot easier. So first thing we're gonna do is turn on the cooker, got a pan of water on a high heat and it's a big pan. We're gonna take the pig skins which don't have much fat on and we're just basically going to submerge them into the water. As many as you can fit in really for this part of the process because we want to blanch them for an hour so it's very simple just chuck them in boiling water and you don't need to salt the water or anything at this stage as far as I can tell it's just a case of getting them in there in fact you probably don't even have to unravel them just keep them raveled up like this get as many in there as I can and then we're going to come back after an hour and we're going to then cut the skins to the size that we require because it's considerably easier to cut the skins once they have been cooked and then once that's done we'll move on to the next stage so uh, I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once we've had an hour of uh, good simmering for these skins right we're an hour in and this is essentially what the skins look like. I could have got the frame in a little bit better there. So you can see they're just completely flexible like jelly and uh, they'll be dead easy to cut so we're going to take them out, we're going to drain them and then we're going to ch chop them up into small little squares Right, so here are the boiled pig skins. As you can see, they're very floppy and flexible and they tear quite easily, which is perfect for the next stage. Because what we need to do now is dehydrate them. So I've bought a dehydrator. If you're a sub, sub to the channel, you'll know that I've picked one up recently. But you could just use the oven if need be with the door cracked open. So, I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut up all of the pieces 
of rind to what I think is about the right size. Now when these are fried, ultimately they expand in size three or four times what they already are. So you need to bear that in mind because if you do large pieces then obviously they may not fit in your pan. You can fry them whole if you've got the space but I don't so we're going to chop all these up and pop them on a drying rack and put them in the dehydrator. I'm going to dry them at about 55 degrees for around 10 hours or until they feel like little pieces of plastic essentially that's what we're going for so you're going to have to employ whatever drying technique you have available to you like I say fortunately for me I have a dehydrator they're not expensive so we've got several trays of the skin in the dehydrator ready to go and the plan is um, I think I want to dry this starting at about 55 degrees because what tends to happen is sometimes the edges curl up just a little bit and it makes them a little bit more difficult to fry to drain after they've been fried so we'll just knock this temp down to 55 and we'll leave that to run for 10 hours right before the washing machine kicks onto a full spin here I have a large pan of beef dripping that I've been experimenting with so we're going to uncover this and we're going to get it up to around 190 degrees centigrade ready for frying so the oil's at about temperature now about 190 degrees and to speed up the process a little bit I've got some pre-made these are what I did last week these are what the skins will look like when they come out of the dehydrator and as you can tell they're like little bits of plastic they're really, they're solid. You can't even bend them. But this is where the magic happens. So if I just show you what we've got going on in here, and we throw one of these little beauties in, you'll see that he sinks to the bottom. And then all of a sudden, it'll just flare up, expand, and hey presto. We have our pork rind. And this is the trick. So I'm trying to hold them in the water. There he goes. There we are. So you see what I mean about him expanding considerably. That's much bigger now. So we'll drain this and I'll show you that again. For those of you who missed it. Okay. Let's see if we can set the camera up, get a better shot without the crackling. There's a little bit of water on that spatula when I threw him in. Okay. One, two, three, and four of them this time. In they go. Now they start. Magic. And then out and onto some absorbent kitchen paper.
And there they are, crackling away, listen to that. Right, so while we're letting those cool for a moment, what we're going to do is put together a seasoning for them. So it's going to start with a good handful of salt, you'll not see that in there, as long as it's white. And then we want maybe half a teaspoon of paprika and a good helping of pepper. There we go. So we mix that up. And then bring in our pork rinds and we'll just dust it over the top. Now they're beginning to look a little bit more familiar. And there is the finished article. It certainly is a thing of beauty and for the taste test. Yep. They'll do for me every time. So there we go, I don't want to confuse the issue too much. So a quick rundown. Pig skin, very lean, not a lot of fat on there at all. Boiled for an hour, that sort of helps cook all of the all of the fibres or whatever the skin's made up, collagen or whatever it is. Dehydrate until the consistency of plastic essentially, and then cook in steaming, like searing hot oil, 190 degrees, as hot as you can go. I've experimented with uh, pig fat, uh, beef dripping, so lard, beef dripping, and vegetable oil. The beef dripping tastes the nicest, but you can get the veg oil a little bit hotter if needed. And then uh, season with salt, paprika, and uh, pepper, or whatever else you like. It's that easy. You make some at home. It's cheap as well. They just don't keep very well. Because they're delicious. And they can go stale. They don't have time to go stale here though. Yeah.